ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا اما بعد فإن خير الكلام كلام الله عز وجل وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ثم أما بعد إنديد We begin by praising Allah عز وجل We praise Allah and we thank Allah We seek Allah's help and we seek Allah's assistance in managing and navigating the affairs of our lives. Whomsoever Allah guides is truly guided, and whomever Allah allows to go astray, there is none that can guide. I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah and Allah alone. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and his messenger, and is the seal of all prophets. I remind myself and I remind all of you with the ayah, or you who believe, Fear your Lord Allah in the matters in which he should be feared. And those are in all matters. And do not die except in full and complete submission in Islam. For whosoever is resurrected on the day of judgment, believing in a God other than Allah or along with Allah, will certainly be from among the people who lose on the day of judgment. Woe to those who are resurrected, naked and uncircumcised, as we all will be. Believing in a prophet or messenger after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for they too will be from among the people who lose on the day of judgment. Indeed, there is a day which will come and inevitably, inevitably pass and this is the last day. Whosoever is resurrected on that day believing in a book of wahi and revelation after the Quran will certainly be from among the people who lose on the day of judgment and woe to those who lose on that day for after it there is no victory indeed the best of speech is the book of Allah Al-Quran and the best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the most evil of matters are the religious innovations the religious practices every religious innovation is a going astray and all of it leads nowhere except that it will earn an individual the anger of Allah, the punishment of Allah, and the fire of hell, the fire of Jahannam. And indeed, we seek refuge and protection with Allah and in Allah from His anger, from His punishment, and from His fire. Ameen. Wa jazakumullah khair. My dear brothers and sisters, indeed, a few weeks ago, the Olympics began. And the Olympics is a time in which everyone becomes for a moment prideful and proud of their country and those athletes who represent their country and of course it was unfortunate that russia was not able to participate in the olympics because of their invasion in the ukraine but israel was allowed to participate in the olympics although they have been killing tens of thousands of innocent men women and children young and old what made everyone upset at the beginning of the olympics was the opening scene and the opening ceremony we always say that there are people who are in positions of power who seek to sow the seeds of corruption and facade and the Olympics was just another example 
of how not only are Muslims under attack, but people of faith are under attack. For you find that those organizers open the ceremony of the Olympics with a depiction of one of the holiest days on the Christian calendar. And that is the day which is called the Last Supper. What was the Last Supper? According to Christians, they believe that Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus Christ salam, he sat with his companions, his disciples, his hawariyin, and they ate from a table of food, which was his last meal before the other events were to occur. And although as Muslims, we do not find within our Quran nor in our Sunnah any mentioning of a last supper. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has preserved for us the story or the incident of a supper where Isa ibn Maryam was asked by his disciples for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send down a table full of food so that they may eat. So we say that this depiction was not depicted with European looking men in robes, which would have been offensive to me, but it was depicted even worse than that. It was depicted of men dressed like women and women dressed like men. An LGBTQ plus agenda, knowing that the opening scene of the Olympics will be spread around the world. They decided to open with a scene promoting their lifestyle at the expense of the honor of the people of faith. Now I was happy and I was disappointed. I was happy to see that people of faith, that our Christian brothers and sisters still have within them some level of goodness and, and hirs for their religious figures, that they became upset, the Christian world, and they demanded that the committee issue a public apology, which they did. But I was a little disappointed in the response coming from the Muslim world. Because had they depicted the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in this scene, the Muslim world would have erupted. And rightfully so. Because we do not play games when it comes to the prophets and messengers. And we are those who will defend the honor of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But in the same way in which we defend the Prophet's honor, it is our duty and responsibility to become equally upset when any of the prophets and messengers are depicted in a dishonorable way. And any of the righteous men and women, the pious men and women, his hawariyin were being depicted in a dishonorable way. The world should have seen the Muslim world erupt. How much da'wah and how effective that would have been. How many hearts would that have touched? How many Christians would have reverted by seeing how much we care about Jesus Christ, Isa ibn Maryam, and what he represents. However, there will be other opportunities for us. I hope that we educate ourselves. And we understand that that moment was a moment for us to speak with our neighbors, co-workers, classmates, and people in the street. People who do not have our faith, Islam, but perhaps are upon Christianity. And for us to express how disgusted we are. For them to think for themselves, why are the Muslims upset that Jesus was being villainized on that day and depicted in such a despicable caricature? But what I want to speak about on this day of Jumu'ah is in fact that moment what the Christians call the Last Supper. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us that when the 
Ahlul Kitab, when the people of the book, specifically the Jews and the Christians, when they speak, and when they talk about religious affairs, do not affirm what they say, for perhaps you will affirm a falsehood. But neither reject what they say, because perhaps you may reject something that is true. And when we look at this depiction of Isa ibn Maryam with his disciples eating at the table, the question comes to one's mind, what does Islam have to say about this incident? And Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has preserved for us in the Mus'haf, the story and the incident of Isa sitting and eating with his disciples. And so we want to take this moment to read those verses, to extract the lessons and benefits so that it may help us to not only understand our religion even more, but help us to find more bridges between the Muslim world and the Christian world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Ma'idah, and we should begin there. Surah Al-Ma'idah, what does Ma'idah mean? Ma'ida means a table spread out full of food. A ma'ida is a table that is spread out full of food. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala names the fifth chapter of the Quran, Surah al Ma'ida. But we do not get to that incident until we reach the 112th verse. In which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ba'da a'udhu billahi minash shaytan al-rajim If qala al-hawariyuna and remember when the Hawariyun, when the disciples of Jesus Christ, when they said, Ya Isa ibn Maryam, O Jesus, son of Mary, Hal yastati'u rabbuka ay yunazzila alayna ma'idatan min as samai Is it possible for your Lord to send down for us from the heavens a table spread out full of food? What was the response of Isa ibn Maryam to this request? Qala ittaqullah in kuntum mu'mineen Fear Allah if you are true believers. The question comes, why would Isa respond to his disciples with fear Allah when they were asking for a table full of food? Two reasons. Number one, the scholars, they say that Isa was reminding them to fear Allah and to rely upon Allah for their provisions. Meaning that they should go out and seek food and sustenance if they were hungry. And not sit and ask for Allah to deliver the meals in front of them. Fear Allah and go and get your provisions and go and get your rizq. And this is a lesson for us as well. For those who are struggling, we should not think that Allah is just going to send the job our way, send a spouse our way, send the food our way, but we must get up and we must go out and seek the provisions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But the second reason why Isa told them to fear Allah when they made this request is because Isa knew and understood that whenever the servants of Allah, and that is all of us, when we call upon Allah and ask Allah for a miracle and ask Allah for something, when Allah gives it to us, if we are ungrateful thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will certainly punish us. Why? Because we raised our hands, we made a request, Allah responded, and then we showed ingratitude to Allah after. So Isa was warning his disciples, don't ask for something from Allah, don't ask for this miracle, because if Allah gives it to you, and thereafter you are ungrateful, or you turn in disbelief, Allah will punish you severely. The disciples, the Hawariyun, when they heard this response from Isa, they decided that they would justify their request. They wanted to let Isa ibn Maryam know that we're not asking for a table full of food just for you to perform a miracle for us, but there are reasons behind it. And they list four reasons. The first of them they say, 
نُرِيدُ أَن نَأْكُلَ مِنْهَا We wish to eat from it. They were hungry. The disciples were starving. And we know that those who choose to follow the prophets and messengers, indeed they have a life of difficulty and hardship. How many days and how many nights would the companions of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, go without food? Aisha radiallahu anha, she said two months would go by and no fire would be lit in the home of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and we would survive off of the dates and the water. Those companions radiallahu anhum, when they were digging the trench of Khandaq, there was no food. And between each and every Sahaba was one date. And when they finished that date, they sucked on that seed the entire day. Abu Bakr and Omar is walking out at night, one, two o'clock in the morning from hunger, radiallahu anhuma. And when they bumped into the Messenger of Allah, he said, what is it that you are doing out? They said, we have tied us one stone to our stomach and we are walking from hunger. We cannot sleep. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, I have tied two stones to my stomach. I too am walking because I cannot sleep from hunger. We know. Whosoever decides to tread upon this path will be tested with hunger. Certainly. So they told Isa, we are asking because we are starving. But then they followed it up with three more reasons. They said, And we seek and we desire that our hearts will find peace and reassurance and rest. Why? Because when we see this miracle, it will give us that energy, that confirmation that we are upon the truth. And that our hunger is not in vain. And that we are not sacrificing in vain. So we ask for this miracle so that it could bring some relief to our heart. They continued and they said, And we hope by this miracle we can confirm that you have told us the truth. My dear brothers and sisters, this is where we see the distinction between the Sahaba of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the disciples and companions of any other Prophet and Messenger before. The Hawariyun, from among the reasons they asked for this miracle is to confirm that what Isa is saying was true. And I tell you, the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never once Ask Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to perform a miracle. Never. Never. In all of the time that they were struggling, all of the lives that have been lost on the battlefields, all of the time that they suffered hunger and suffered loss, those instances and situations when they were surrounded and believed that tomorrow might not come, they never once turned to the Nabi and asked him to perform a miracle. However, the Prophet والسلام, on many instances when he saw the hardships of his companions, he performed miracles. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him miracles, but his companions never came asking for confirmation. And this is why we say about them, radiallahu anhum, may Allah be pleased with them, for they never asked the Nabi to perform any miracle. Last but not least, they said, وَنَكُونَ عَلَيْهَا مِنَ الشَّاهِدِينَ And we want to be from among its witnesses. Because as you know, seeing a miracle and hearing about a miracle is not the same thing. What do we extract from these four reasons they put forth for this miracle? We see that from these four reasons, it is divided into two groups. The first group, their request came from a dunya need. They were asking for food, for provisions, for their dunya, for this life. And that is what they began with. We are asking you, Isa, because we're hungry. They started with their worldly needs. And then the following three reasons were their deen needs. So that our hearts may be reassured, so that we may know that you told us the truth, and so that we may be witnesses to the miracle. When Isa heard their request, 
and heard their reasons. He did not respond to them. Instead, he turned and he raised his hands to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he supplicated. And this is where I need everyone's undivided attention. Qala Isa ibn Maryam and Isa the son of Mary, he said, Allahumma, oh Allah, Rabbana, oh our Lord, stop here. We see from the beginning of this dua, the etiquettes of dua. You and me, when we have a need, Allahumma, followed by our need. Oh Allah, need. Oh Allah, need. Isa, Allahumma, followed by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rabbana, etiquettes of dua. When you're going to call on Allah and ask Allah, call Him by His names. Praise Him before you put your request forward. Send down for us a table from among the heavens. And then Isa puts forward the reasons why. Pay attention. Takunu lana eidan. So that this day will be an Eid for us. Li'awwalina wa akhirina. For the first of us and the last of us. The Mufassirin, they say, the Isa was saying, Oh Allah, send us down this table and on this day, we will take it as a religious holiday. As an Eid for the first of us and the last of us. Then until the day of judgment, we will recognize and remember this day. Subhanallah. Does not our Christian brothers recognize the Last Supper from that time to now? Is this the same day that Isa said would be taken as an aid for them until the last of them? Perhaps. Perhaps. Isa continues and he says, minka, And we will take this as a sign from you. Warzuquna. And it will also be a source of provisions for us. Indeed, you are the best of providers. Notice that the Hawariyun, when they put forth their reasons why, they first mention their dunya need, we want to eat, followed by their religious needs. But when Isa called upon Allah, he first put forth their religious needs before their dunya needs. He said, this will be an aid for us. This will be an ayah from you and also we can eat from it. My dear brothers and sisters, indeed, we take a lesson from this. When you were to tally how many times you have called upon Allah, I ask you, how many times have you called upon Allah for dunya matters versus deen matters? And you know, how many times have you called Allah for a job, for children, for marriage, for health, for work, for location, for guidance, for this, to heal someone, this, that, all of your dunya needs. When was the last time that you called on Allah for religious reasons? Oh Allah, help me be sincere. Help me to have ikhlas. Help me to lower my gaze. Help me to focus. Help me to memorize Quran. Help me to make the Umrah. Help me to make the Hajj. Help me to fast on Mondays and Thursdays. Help me to fast the three days during the month. Help me for my religious needs. If we are honest with ourselves, far greater do we ask Allah for worldly matters than for our religious matters. And indeed we see the Hawariyun, they put forth their worldly needs before their religious needs. But Isa taught them that when you call upon Allah, make your worldly needs the last thing that you ask Allah for. And never forget to ask Allah for your religious needs and convictions. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد dear brothers and sisters last ayah and we will make the salah short Allah سبحانه وتعالى responds to the dua of Isa and what does Allah say قال الله إني منزلها عليكم. I will send down this table upon you. فما يكفر بعض منكم فإني أذبه عذابا لا أذبه أحد من العالمين. Indeed, I will send this table down for you. But if you show kufr after, I will punish you with a punishment I've never punished anyone with before. What 
does this kufr mean in this ayah? This belief? No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in another ayah, Surah Ibrahim, وَلَئِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you are grateful, you show shukr, Allah will give you more. وَلَئِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ But if you are ungrateful, إِنَّ عَذَابِ لَشَدِيدٍ My punishment is severe. Brothers and sisters, I want you to ask yourselves, how many times have you called on Allah for something when He gave you? Gave you those healthy children. Gave you that position you sought for. Gave you that wife in marriage. Gave you that home you strove for. Healed your parents when they were ill. Healed you when you were ill. How many times have you called upon Allah and He gave it to you? Have you been thankful to Allah? Or have there been moments where you showed in gratitude to Allah? Kufr to Allah. This is the question that I leave you with. My dear brothers and sisters, we must be careful when we call upon Allah and Allah delivers never to show Allah in gratitude for His favors and His many blessings. For indeed, there were people before you, the people of Thamud, they asked their Prophet Salah for a miracle. They asked their Prophet Salah to turn this rock into a camel. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did it, Salah warned them, do not approach this camel with any evil. Today she drinks, tomorrow you drink. The day after she drinks, the day after you drink. What did they do? They slaughtered the camel. They showed in gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What was Allah's response? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down a rod, the thunderbolt. They lived in their homes, called out of rock. Water can't hurt the rock. Tornado can't hurt the rock. Earthquake can't move the rock. But sound can penetrate stone. And as they slept, they heard an awful cry which caused all of their hearts to fail. They died in their homes, all of them, because of their ingratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us be ever careful when we call upon Allah and Allah responds. Let us be ever patient with any difficulty and hardship and understand that this life is a temporary abode. And let us show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the greatest level of shukr and gratitude. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi akhirati hasana wa qina adhab al-nar. Rabbana innana amanna faghfir lana dhunubana wa qina adhab al-nar. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi ya ayuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama salli ta'ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim. إنك حميد مجيد وقيم الصلاة